Hi! Welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 29. Today is Sunday, March 1st, and I'm Laura, your host. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the Corner of Knit and Tea, which is also where this episode's show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called the Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, where I sell my hand-spun yarn and hand-woven scarves. And we have a Ravelry group called the Corner of Knit and Tea. If you haven't checked us out already, please come over and do. We have lots of fun chatting and some knit-alongs and some exciting things going on over there. So hi, welcome back. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for tuning in with me again. If this is your first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. It has been a pretty good week here. We've had some snow, which has been nice. And um, actually, so there's a little bit of a story with um, all the different things that have been going on through the years. Um, my husband and I have sort of a mishmash of bedroom furniture and our mattress is uh, on the floor right now um, and has been for quite a while. And a few weeks ago, my husband said to me, it's time, it's been enough, I'm going to order us some bedroom furniture. And he did, and we got the shipping notice this week. So we're getting very excited to have uh, bedroom furniture, but also we are looking at where things are going to go in the rest of the house. And so that means in the next several weeks, I'm probably gonna do some revamping of my craft room, which makes me super excited because I may even have a new spot to record from, and I'm gonna try and neaten things up in here. So I may be able to show you a little bit of a tour. And so I, it's it's been kind of an exciting week in that respect, just kind of thinking about how things are going to look and um, what we want to do. So that's really um, pretty much what's been going on here. I apologize if I'm squinting a little bit. Um, we got several inches of snow yesterday and um, I lowered the shades on the window that's directly in front of me, but it is super bright. So, um, and I feel like it's washing out a little bit of the colors here, but I guess we'll just have to see how that works. So I guess I will go ahead and get started. Today I am drinking, um, I've drunk this before, it's Apple Almond from Lana's The Little House. You can get all kinds of samples from um, her website, Lana's The Little House, and also she actually sells through Amazon. Um, I was turned on to this particular uh, tea uh, blender or this particular tea vendor from a friend of mine, Anna, who is um, Sugaroni on Ravelry, and she um, she introduced me to Crack Tea, which is their uh, coconut almond black tea, and it is a delicious. Um, she calls it Crack Tea, it's actually Snowflake Tea, um, but she has, um, Lana has a bunch of um, really nice teas, and I ordered a whole bunch of samples a while back, so I'm still drinking them. And that is in my Hoops and Yo-Yo mug, which is one of my um, favorite. I just love them. They're, they're super cute and goofy. So that is apple almond tea in my Hoops and Yo-Yo mug. And it's delicious as usual. So that brings me to what I am wearing. This is um, Idlewood by Cecily Glauick McDonald. And it was in an interweave knits, although I believe it is available for purchase on its own. It is a tunic um, and has great pocket details down at the bottom. And I knit this um, in uh, Brown Sheep Lamb's Pride Superwash in the colorway Midnight Pine. And it is super warm. Actually, I'm a little bit warm <laughs> in the house today. Um, and it's got this great cowl neck that I just absolutely love. So this is great for um, cold days with a, with a shirt underneath. It's just a great tunic. So that brings me to what I have been working on this week. Um, last week I showed you the first sock. Um, uh, I am knitting, uh, or I was knitting with mustache yarns, um, Dark Side of the Moon, which is one of her very popular colorways, and I showed you the first sock, and now I have two. I finished them this week. I had some extra time, um, which was great, and again, this is my standard sock recipe. I start with David Schultz's um, Toe Up Sock Cookbook for the rounded toe, and then knit my plain um, sole, or, uh, foot here, and then I use a Fishlips Kiss Heel, 
and then just add a little bit of gusset shaping and about two inches of ribbing at the top. So those are done and ready to wear. Very excited about those and rainbows help keep um, dreary February a little bit, a um, little bit playful. So those, um, that is the only finished object I have for this week, but I'm super excited about those. And um, she uh, actually produces them in what she calls OCD skeins. She divides the skein into two um, exactly equal skeins so that you can start at the same point and have two um, perfectly matched socks. And as you can see, I was able to do that. So I really appreciated that and enjoyed knitting these. So that brings me to um, what is on my needles. Um, this uh, you have seen many times before. It is the Leftovers Cowl by Wendy Johnson. I am closing in on the end. This week was the end of week nine, meaning I am three quarters of the way done. And actually I was able to start just a little bit on section 10. So I am getting really excited about having this finished and I wouldn't be surprised if I put in some extra work this week and maybe finish sections 10 and 11. We'll have to see. Um, but where I left off last week, I believe, is I left off on the blue section with the orange triangles. I did another argyle section with purple and yellow. And then I have, this is a uh, very dark blue and a little bit of white. And then this is my new favorite section, the birds sitting on the wire. I found this chart online. I believe it may also be a cowl, but I was super excited by that and um, had a great time doing it. And like I said, it may be my new favorite section. And then little stars um, in gray and red, and then uh, just a geometric pattern in yellow and green. And then the blue and pink at the top is actually the start of um, the next section. So I am moving right along. I, Like I said, I am up through section nine. I'm getting very close and I'm a little anxious to uh, actually have this done now so that I can move on to other fun things. Um, so that is again my Leftovers Cowl by Wendy Johnson. So that leaves me with what else I want to work on. Um, I finished the socks on Saturday, so uh, yesterday, so I really haven't had a chance to do too much. Um, but in the past few months, I have been watching several podcasters. Um, I, to name a few, uh, Molly over at A Homespun House, uh, Cara over at Knit All the Things, and um, Bryony Bears, Kay over at Bakery Bears. And I have been watching them knit uh, sock blankets uh, and call them Cozy Memories Blankets. And I had originally thought that I would use up most of my sock leftovers in the leftovers cowl so that I would not have a ton of leftovers. Um, but as it turns out, I was very wrong. I have lots of leftovers. So, and I also have a whole bag of variegated leftovers that I have not used in the cowl because I have thought that they'll be too distracting. So I've really only been using my solids on the cowl. So I started to give some thought to what kind of blanket I would want to do. Um, and I looked at everybody doing the different, um, the simple sock yarn blanket, the barn raising squares, um, all, all kinds of different things. And actually what I settled on was not knitting. I really wanted to do the hexagon how-to pattern by Lucy of Attic 24. And if you have not checked out her blog, it is adorable. She writes from, uh, she lives in England and um, she called it Lucy's Attic because she crafts quite a bit in the attic level of their little home. And she shows all kinds of uh, views out into the countryside from her attic. Um, and she is primarily a crocheter and has some wonderful patterns and tutorials. And I had used some of them before. Um, although I am not much of a crocheter, I can do a little bit um, and so I had decided that I wanted to give it a try and so I ordered a crochet hook in the appropriate size and I started and yesterday on Instagram I actually posted a photo of the first three 
um, hexagons that I did. Um, basically, they're made by uh, crocheting a circle and then the hexagon is the added border. And she also has a tutorial for joining as you go, which makes it super easy because you don't have to seam them up afterwards. And she has a tutorial for weaving in your ends as you go so that you don't have to weave in all your ends. And um, I could use some work at the weaving in ends portion. I actually did take a needle and weave in a few ends. Um, but I had three yesterday. These three when I posted on Instagram and then I did three more last night and um, it's a little bit addictive and I suspect that I'll be working on these quite a bit and I have um, a ton of leftovers and want to make a huge blanket um, eventually it will probably grace the uh, love seat we're going to put in the craft room so I expect this will be a huge long-term project. And again, it is not knitting, but it is crocheting. And um, I hope that I will get a little bit better as time goes on. But I am pretty pleased with learning a new craft and doing a few squares. And this is just um, leftover scraps. This is the dark side of the moon socks that I just finished. Um, and these were my Christmas socks, if you remember. And then some of these others are just solids and things from other knitting projects. So I expect that I'll be working on this. I probably won't show it every single week, but that is um, one of my new projects. So I announced last week that um, March was going to be a hat along in the corner of Knit and Tea Group, which basically means craft a hat, any kind of hat. It can be knit, crochet, it can be woven, um, come up with another technique and it's probably okay, um, and uh, finish a hat and post a photo of the finished object in the corner of Knit and Tea Group. I'm going to start a finished object thread um, and I will be doing a random number generator dry, uh, uh, draw for prizes at the end of the month. So even though I am not personally eligible for prizes, I will be knitting along and I wanted to show you the first hat that I'm planning to knit. I mentioned this last week and a wonderful viewer um, corrected my pronunciation. Um, this is the Snorheed hat by Kate Davies and it is a great snowflake hat with a wonderful pom-pom and it is color work which uh, as you know is my new favorite thing to do. So this is the hat that I will be doing first this month and I was going to show you the yarn that I have selected. I have um, its Knit Picks. Um, this one is actually Knit Picks Essential, which I believe predated Knit Picks Stroll. So this has been in my stash a really long time. This is the colorway Bordeaux. And then this is Knit Picks Stroll in the colorway Dove Heather. And I think those are going to be great together and I'm very excited. So I will be casting that on probably even this evening and working on that at work and knit night this week. And I don't know if I'll finish it in time for next week's podcast, but um, I will definitely be able to show some progress. So that is my first hat for the hat along. And if you haven't um, decided whether or not to join us, please do. I opened a chat thread to discuss patterns and what you would like to do. And as I said, I will open um, the finished objects thread for a prize draw later today and that will run March 1st through March 31st so you have plenty of time um, and you are allowed multiple entries. As many hats as you knit during the month, you can post photos. So if you're going to make multiple hats this month, which is what I plan to do, um, you can enter multiple times. So that, I believe, is the end of my knitting, and I guess I should call it knitting and crocheting section now, um, and we'll move on to spinning. Last week I showed you a beautiful braid from On The Round. It was a blue-faced Lester fiber, and it had all kinds of beautiful colors in it, and I have finished that. Um, and I believe it's um, between 250 and 275 yards of sport weight. It is fluffy and squishy and beautiful. It is pinks and purples and um, some yellows and greens and blues and it kind of just hit all the colors and it's not... Um, it, is, it came out a little bit muted, although I wouldn't say it's pastels. 
Um, but it is beautiful colors, and like I said, it is squishy, and it will be going up in the shop this afternoon. So if you are interested, that has not been spoken for, and that is the yarn I finished this week. So now if you'll excuse me for two seconds, I have fiber down. Um, that brings me to the next fiber that I'm going to spin. Um, I don't I know some of you are members of the crazy, twisted, and arbitrary uh, spinning group, and they do spin-alongs every couple months. Um, they select a dyer or um, propose to work with a dyer. Uh, the dyer suggests a theme, and everybody submits pictures to the theme. And at the end, um, we all vote on the photos and send the top um, four photos that are chosen to the dyer, who gets to interpret um, what those photos are onto fiber. Um, and she selects, she or he selects um, a couple of them to turn into fiber. And then they sell the fiber and we can purchase and then spin along during the month. So um, for, let me think about this, for uh, I guess January, February, March is um, the dyer was Adrian over at Hello Yarn and um, I can't remember her theme. I think she wanted, um, I think she wanted a style of painting. Um, and so everybody submitted all kinds of different paintings and light, and, and she was looking for high contrast between lights and darks. Um, and I ended up ordering one of the fibers um, that she produced. I ordered um, on Falkland because I love Falkland. It is a um, long stapled but soft fiber. Um, and this is called Lengthy Fibers Drew. And it is yellows and oranges and teals and greens and browns and it is just beautiful. And so I am going to spin that this week. And um, the interesting thing is that when you're a member of this group and you spin along with them, you get to see all kinds of spinners um, spin the same fiber in different ways, which I think is super interesting to see how everybody sort of interprets the fibers and how different um, people spinning it can be. But so that is what I'm going to do this week. So I think that's most of what I have prepared. I already talked about the hat along over in the group. Um, I know a few of you have spoken to me about uh, the pie shawl along, which will be starting on pie day, which is 3, 14, 15. Um, and I am still in the process of selecting what I want to knit. Um, and I think I have it narrowed down. Um, and I have some uh, yarn that I need to pull out. So I will definitely be doing that. And I am just kind of caught up in all of my different projects and what I want to do next. And um, pretty soon, I hope, I hope, I hope it will be spring. And so I'll start thinking about spring and summer knits, which is exciting. Um, and I know there are a bunch of other knit alongs going on. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna join any of them. I know um, Bryony Bears over at the um, Bakery Bears podcast is doing a spring sock knit along, um, which I would love to do, but I just don't know if I'm going to have the bandwidth to do that. And I am starting to think ahead to next term for Harry Potter about um, what I might like to do as a big project. So I just have kind of all kinds of things swirling. Um, and I guess that's about it for me. I hope that you are having a good week and are enjoying your knits and spins. Um, and if you have any questions for me or any comments or any suggestions at any time, please always feel free to leave a comment or um, send me a message on Ravelry or elsewhere. I'm always around. Um, and I suppose that will be it for the week. So I will say to you, as I always say, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time.